Next up for my Overwatch League 2020 season team previews is going to be the Toronto Defiant, who've had a very busy offseason. Most of their 2019 roster has been released, with the team making a number of aggressive moves, but I've seen a lot of fan favourite players make the move to Canada for 2020. Add to this the acquisition of a couple of hot prospects, and on paper you have the makings of a very solid side. But, is the fanfare and expectation of this team going to be realised, or is there a real possibility that this squad instead crashes and burns? The Toronto Defiant are now the fourth expansion team that I've covered, and of those, they probably entered the league with the least amount of hype, with many thinking that their original all Korean lineup didn't look that great. Stage 1 couldn't have started any better for them, with the team taking advantage of a weak schedule to finish with an impressive 5 2 record that comfortably qualified them for the stage playoffs. Here, they would be quickly eliminated by the San Francisco Shock, but all in all, it had been a great start for Toronto. From here, though, things quickly turned sour. Stella announced his retirement, and in his place, the team promoted the path to pro speedrunner I'm37. Whilst this was met with community appreciation, I'm37's insertion into the starting lineup caused a lot of problems, with their stage 1 star Zarya Ivy being placed on brick, with I'm37 taking up the Zarya responsibilities instead. At the same time, Yakpun started to noticeably struggle at main tank, and with all of these factors weakening the team's performance in a much harder schedule, the Defiant did a 180 in stage 2 compared to stage 1 with the side finishing with a 2 and 5 record. Clearly change was needed, with Asher also announcing his retirement, and this is where Toronto decided to take a different approach in terms of their team's setup. They promoted Gods and Shariq from their academy roster and tried to put together a mixed starting lineup, with Envy being traded away to the Shanghai Dragon shortly afterwards. It's fair to say that progress was slow at best, as the team went on to join the 0-7 club in stage 3. Stage 4 saw the Defiant bring in yet more reinforcements, this time in the form of fan favourites, Logix and Mangachu, who helped this team to make some improvement, by which I mean they won one game in Stage 4. Taking their regular season record to 8-20, they saw them finish 17th in the overall standings. After such a blistering start, it can't be denied that the way Toronto's season ended was very disappointing, so let's take a look at what they've done with their rosters to try and turn things around in 2020. At DPS, the late season arrivals of Mangachu and Logix are the only survivors, with I'm37 being released, whilst Ivy is left to join the Philadelphia Fusion. With the spots available though, the Defiance have made two headline fan favourite Canadian signings in the form of Shawfall from the LA Gladiators and Agilities from the LA Valiant. Moving on to their tanks, all three of the players at the end of 2019 have been released, with Gods and Sharik becoming free agents, whilst Yakpun has returned to contenders in Korea and joined O2 Blast. To fill the starting slots, the team has signed Beast, formerly from Fusion University at Main Tank, and have paired him alongside the Swedish prospect at Off Tank, Nevix, after he left the San Francisco Shock. Lastly at support, Roki is the only player that remains, with Neko being released and joining Yakpun on O2 Blast, whilst Aid is retired and joined the Paris Eternal as an assistant coach. In their places, the side has been bolstered with the additions of Kellix after he left the Boston Uprising, as well as Kareev from the LA Valiant, who joined Toronto in the same package deal as Agilities. Out of all the teams I've discussed so far, the Defiant look to have made the most changes in regards to their roster, with very few players being kept on from their disastrous 2019 campaign, whilst the team has been aggressive in making moves and pursuing free agents available in order to make this a primarily Western lineup. Quite clearly, a key objective of the moves they've made was to increase the popularity of this team, but honestly, it was very forgettable last season, aside from when they made the popular pickups like I'm 37, Gods, Logix, and Mangachu. For 2020, they've picked up the Canadian DPS favourites of Shawfor and Agilities, whilst also adding other popular players like Kareev. And as such, regardless of their quality, I reckon they'll be an incredibly popular side in the league next year. Behind the scenes, there have also been many other changes, particularly on the coaching staff, with Fefe, the former Paris Eternal head coach, being brought in as a Defiance new head coach, flanked by Lilbo and All Bless's assistants. It's hard to say how well Fefe is going to do on Toronto after his rough past year with Paris, but in his defence, the eternal situation looked to be the result of a lot of issues, and he could really flourish in this new environment that's been built for Toronto next season. And focusing in on that point, I found it really interesting to listen to their GM Jay about what the team has tried to achieve this offseason, and if you want to hear some of his thoughts on the matter, I'd recommend you check out an interview he did with Canadian Esports, which I'll link down in the description below, as I thought it gave a really unique insight into his thoughts on the 2019 season, as well as on the roster moves they've made for 2020. The key thing that stood out to me was the goal of bringing in talent with on-stage LAN experience, whilst also at the same time really building an environment where the players on this team can become friends and be a very together unit throughout the travel schedule. If both of these aims come to fruition, then the Defiant could find themselves being a team that adapts really well to the new homestand model, and this is definitely something to keep an eye on as the season progresses. But now I think it would be a good time to look at the players in more detail, and yet again I'll be starting at DPS. Logic's remaining with the team came as no surprise, having been one of the team's biggest bright spots at the end of last year, with consistently impressive hits and displays. 
and with him being a very popular player as well, his return makes a lot of sense, and should be good for the team if hitscan heroes are prominent in the upcoming metas. Initially, I might have had a few more questions for Mangachu being on the roster, given that if we look at his play critically, rather than with the popular eye that there often is, he didn't look fantastic into stage 4, with an inconsistency in his performance that was highlighted further at the Overwatch World Cup. However, we know that when he's on form, he can be a very talented flex option, and this is why I'm happy to see that he's decided to try and work on things in contenders for a bit on a two-way contract, which should help him find his confidence again before eventually making a return. This of course means a bigger responsibility will now rest on the shoulders of their newest members, Sure 4 and Agilities, who are not only going to have to perform well as likely starters, but also receive the majority of fan attention, now being the only Canadians on the main roster. In terms of their quality, the pair have demonstrated over the past couple of years that when they play to their peak and are enjoying the game at the same time, they can be some of the deadliest Western DPS players in Overwatch. However, this is not to say that I don't have concerns. Their previous synergy and time together on Team Canada should help them a lot, but considering what happened at the last World Cup, there are some questions that need answering, with the pair not living up to expectations at the most recent event. This is more of a worry that I have with Shawfall rather than Agilities, as I do think when he's not fully driven or is struggling to enjoy playing, his quality can take a significant dip. And given he's come from one of the better teams in the league, if times get tough on the Defiant in 2020, will we see a repeat of Team Canada from the World Cup, or will he instead step up and take more of a leadership role? That remains to be seen. Altogether on paper, this looks to be a really solid DPS group, but I wouldn't say it's amazing unless they were all to play up to their previous peaks. And this is where I'd warn fans to perhaps lower their expectations a tad, as particularly Shaw Foreign Agilities haven't been able to play up to their peaks in the last half a year or so. Tank, meanwhile, is an interesting position to discuss, as the team currently have no backups or alternatives behind their starting duo of Beast and Nevix. Beast, of course formerly known as Beast Halo, has enjoyed a really successful past couple of years in contenders on Fusion University, but have distinguished him as one of the most promising Western main tanks at the Tier 2 level. Had he come in to compete alongside a veteran, I wouldn't have any problems with this move at all, but instead he's been put straight into the firing line as a starter with no backup. Don't get me wrong, I have been impressed with what he's shown in the past and I do believe he has a lot of potential, but in my mind it definitely feels like a bit of a gamble due to the position he plays. We've seen how important the main tank position is for stabilising and driving a team in the Overwatch League, and this will force Beast to play well from the get-go if a team wants to avoid problems that have played other sites like Philly and Paris so he's a player to definitely keep a close eye on in the opening months of the season. Nevix, on the other hand, is a really hard player to preview, as we've only really seen flashes of his promise and potential and have been consistently hyped up for the past couple of years. From what I've seen, I'm hopeful that he can flourish now that he's in a starting spot, rather than sitting on the bench, but I do think it is important that he isn't overhyped as being a guaranteed top off tank in the league. If everything that's been said about him is to be believed, that definitely is his ceiling and potential, but we must be fair and give him at least a little bit of time to settle into a starting role from which we'll soon discover his talents more realistically. In many ways, this tank duo sort of sums up the overall ceiling and floor of Toronto altogether. If they develop and play up to their peaks of their potential, they could be great, but at the same time it's also possible that the pair falls apart under this sort of pressure, so personally I reckon these two will determine how Toronto's season pans out. Finally though, we need to take a look at the support line, which I think is probably going to be the Defiant's most reliable part of their lineup. Whilst Kellex hasn't necessarily shone on Boston for the past two years, I don't think he's been awful either. If anything, just a consistently average player. At the most recent World Cup, however, I think he demonstrated that when surrounded by a better level of overall talent, he can raise his game as well, which is why I think he's a good fit for this promising young roster that looks a lot better from what he had on the Uprising. And in return, his new team could certainly benefit from both his experience and recent reliability. Kareev will be a big part of this, and in my opinion, he's one of the team's best pickups of the offseason. When he finally got to focus on his flex support responsibilities, Kareev demonstrated both on Zen, but especially on Anna, how talented of a player he is, with an incredible stretch last season that saw him produce highlight after highlight, as he basically kind of carried the Valiant for moments in 2019. If he can produce a similar level of quality on Toronto, then this team could find themselves in a really good spot, and I think that both him and Kellex will be able to play off of each other really nicely. If I had to raise any concerns though, perhaps the streaky nature of Kareev, and Kalex's own lows in the past might be worries if they reappeared as problems. And indeed if the meta saw Kareev find himself on Moira, whilst Kalex had to take up more responsibility on a hero like Bap, again there might be issues. But together, with the option of bringing up a popular two-way option in Roki, I think the support line should do well for the side. Bringing everything together though, the Toronto Defiance are a young and promising team that has the potential to do very bright things in 2020, with a number of talented individuals across the squad. This is not a championship roster though, 
and at their peak, I can only see this team making the early stages of the play-ins, and perhaps the playoffs. The big issue for me is that a lot of these players have dropped off a bit in the past, such as at DPS, or are more unknown qualities, such as at Tank. I fear that whilst the team will be very popular, the fans may look at the past peaks of their players and expect the same sort of thing to happen next season for Toronto. This is something I doubt will happen, and I've just got a gut feeling that if anything, this team is more likely to fall off a cliff and really struggle next season, which is why I think the Defiant is such a boom or bust team, and one which even after a couple of months we will probably have a much clearer idea about. But for now though, that's all I've got to say on the Toronto Defiant ahead of the Overwatch League 2020 season, and if you have reached the end of this video, then I'd like to thank you for watching. So if you have enjoyed, please be sure to like, subscribe and follow me on Twitter or at my Discord so you don't miss out. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.